everyone. Very good morning to you all and a warm welcome to everybody who is here, especially those who may be worshipping with us for the first time and those who may be watching on YouTube. <coughs> I don't think you can because there's a sound on upstairs. Is it on? Turn it up. Turn it up. Keep turning it up. Is it? You can't go any louder. Okay, I'll be up now. Just turn it down. Turn it down a wee bit. Okay. Right. Following the service today, tea and coffee is available in the hall. Uh, so why not stay and have a wee blather for a little while? <coughs> Excuse me. Could our property guys uh, have a quick meeting in the hall while we're having a tea? There's a couple of quick things I'd like a chat with. On Tuesday at 1:15 to 1:45, our prayer group. Uh, meets for a short service. This is followed at two o'clock by our afternoon cafe. All our youth groups are now in holiday until September. Now on Thursday we'll be commencing a survey about the church. This will be held in the park at the top of the uh, our exit car park where the park is. It'll not actually be in the car park, it will be in the park side of it. There'll be a blue gazebo there. Uh, this is going to run at random times over the next 10 weeks. And hopefully we will be able to get a clearer idea of what the public want of the church and what we can do for the, the public out there as a church. Now Elaine Woods will be asking the questions which you'll put together on your behalf. And there will also be teas and coffees for anybody passing by so you can have a cup of when you're answering the question. If you can help in any way with this, could you please uh, put your name down at a suitable date? We have a list of dates which are available. There's only two being filled at the present time. They were filled this morning. But if you can come down, we want just a couple of hours at various times throughout the day. This is mainly for company for Elaine and also help with teas and coffees. And if they've got children, we'll have colouring and books and stuff like that. So keep an eye on the kids. And just toddle up and down at all that's necessary. She can pop back to the hall for a, a wee break. So if you can do that for us, we're most welcome. Thank you very much. Now, next Saturday, the church will be represented at Seafield Galladay. Please come along and cheer us on, and you might actually get a little too sweetie. We we'll haven't chucked them away by then. Our normal service next week is at 11 o'clock. At 7 o'clock in the evening, we have an event for all new members, and we have a little invitation here, which, uh, yeah, which uh, some of you will already have, some of you actually haven't have, and it's for next Sunday, the 3rd of July, and it's inviting all those new members in the last year, plus the district elders, to come along and have a get together and a wee chat, find out who we all are and what we do. Uh, I also have to apologise for not advising you sooner. I just suddenly remembered this week that we didn't tell you about the Christian aid offering. We've actually received this year £607.24, which we'd like to thank you all for. It's very much appreciated. Last week I asked for volunteers to help Sandra and myself outline how we envisaged the six churches working together with following the new Presbytery plan. This can be and hopefully will be members of the congregation. Meetings are usually rotated around the different churches every couple of months that transport's been provided. So if you'd like to come and see how to maybe the establishment of a new parish or churches working together and how we can go ahead with this, please speak to either Sandra and myself. Don't worry. There's no admin work that's left to the session clerks to do, and the ministers as well. And finally, uh, some advance notice for the young ones. The holiday club starts again. You happy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's good enough, I suppose. We'll be starting on the 13th of July, 1.30 to 3.30 in the hall. It'll be held once a week. And this is there's some expense incurred in this. If you'd like to maybe give a donation to help the children, You'll see I brought the little holiday club donation book through. Uh, that'll be left at the front door. Just pop your money in for that. Just a few pence. That covers the juices and stuff that they need to get and crisps and whatever else they have. And we're getting a wee story again. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Good morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to Blackburn and Seafield Church. Just to let you know, this is not a cold. This is hay fever. Anybody else suffering with it just now? Yeah, it's horrible, it's horrible. I hope that as we worship today, you experience something of the Lord's presence and his peace. 
Jesus calls us here to meet him. So we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We come as we are, as we were made. We come to offer ourselves to Jesus. We come knowing that our offering means sacrifice, knowing it means hard decisions and hard choices. We come ready to offer ourselves all that we are and all that we do, we offer now to Jesus. Let us worship God, we stand and sing together, ye servants of God, your master proclaim. Good morning, Stepping Stones. How are we today? Good, good. Lovely to see you all again this week. I even seen some of you in school this week, didn't I, Rory? I was in your class. I was visiting Seafield Primary School this, um, this week, speaking um, about how I'm going to come in next term. And I was telling them everybody about the holiday, holiday club, so hopefully that will help. Okay, we've got some um, pictures up, so we put the first one up. What's that? That's a jigsaw, isn't it? Okay, what's the next one? A butterfly. And the last one? That's Jenga. Okay, but there's something not right with all of these. Can anybody tell me what it is? What does all of them have in common? There's only part of a jigsaw, isn't there? There's only part of the butterfly colored in. And the Jenga's not finished yet, because the Jenga finishes when all the bits fall down, isn't it? So what do they all share? They're all not, they're not all complete. That's right, there's still a fair wee bit to go in that jigsaw, isn't it? And that butterfly looks beautiful on one side and it's kind of plain on the other. And there's still a few Jenga pieces to come off that to make it fall over. Not many, I don't think, but they are, they are all not finished. So why do you think they have not been finished? 
What do you think's happened? Sorry? They're tired, that's right, could be. They're exhausted after putting all that effort into these but and they need to go for a wee sleep, okay? Anything else? You think their mum shouted, it's tea time, and have to put it down and come and, come and the, for, if they forget about it, you can finish it afterwards. Something exciting, maybe else. All right, we're going out for a picnic. And you think, oh, that's better than doing this, and away, and away you go. So these activities are not finished because something else has happened. But you might come back and finish them later, but they're not finished at this point. So in our story today, we're going to hear about a number of things that have not been finished. For example, Jesus um, is going to visit a town, and then he decides he's not going. That's funny, isn't it? And then, because he goes to another town and they don't really like him, then the disciples are going, why don't you send down flames of fire and burn them all up? And Jesus has gone, oh, no, you can't do that. And he'll not let them do that. And then this man comes up and says, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus says, no, no. The journey never ends, no, this is not for you, which is a strange thing to do, isn't it? And then there is a man who comes along and says, I want to follow you, but I need to go and do another job. And Jesus says, no, don't leave that job, come and follow me. But you know, I don't think the man was very keen. He wanted to go and finish the job that he started. So in this very short passage that we're going to read later on, there's a lot of things that haven't been finished. But there's one job that Jesus will definitely finish. Do you know what that one job is? What's the final job that Jesus does? Happens at Easter time? He dies, that's right. And so Jesus knows that he's got to go to Jerusalem because that's where all the trial and that's where he's actually going to die. So he's got his eyes fixed on Jerusalem, and nothing is going to stop him. Even people come in and speaking, he still tells people about Jesus, he still hear, heals people, but he knows he has to go to Jerusalem, and he will arrive in Jerusalem because that's where God's leading him. So Jesus is absolutely determined, nothing is going to stop him from getting there. There's nothing more important, there's nothing more exciting than anything else than going to Jerusalem. And he even says to one, one um, man, don't look back. Why do you think he says that? If you look back to the last week, what have you been doing? What exciting things happened on Friday? Can't remember. Finished school, well done, Rory. Yeah, everybody finished school. But Jesus says, no, you've not looked to back, you've not to look back in that. You have to look forward to your holidays now, haven't you? So you don't have to look back to the gala day last week or even for some of us yesterday. You have to keep going to Seafield next week. Woohoo! So that's really good. So God says, you've not to look back, you have to go on and you have to look for Jesus. You've got to search for him. And you know, God's got a plan for all of us, hasn't he? Has God got a plan for us? Well, I started out being a PE teacher and I thought that was God's plan for me. Um, but that wasn't the end of God's plan. God's plan was then I had to go and retrain and be a minister. And you know, being a minister is quite hard. There's lots of nice bits to it. But it's still really hard. And he says to me, this is the job I want you to do. And I know that it's hard, but you've got to keep going. And I've got to keep going for who? For Jesus. Because he started me on this road. And I've got to keep going, even although at times I'm thinking, oh, no. I'm really tired. I'm not going to get to the end of Blackburn procession or even Whitburn yesterday. And then I've got this really hilly bit in the sea field that I've still got to go next week as well. So God says you've got to keep going. And you've got to look to see where God wants you to be. So 
Anybody going on holiday? Ruri, where are you going? Oh, Scarborough. That's good. Is, is Flamingo Land still at Scarborough? You think so? You're going to London. That's good. Amy, do you know where you're going? You're going to Aaron. Oh, that's nice as well. And Ailey, where are you going? You're going on holiday. That's good. That's good. That's really good. I'm going to Centre Parks with my grandson, and then I'm having a holiday the next week because I'll be shattered from going on holiday, from uh, all that swimming and things that we're going to be doing. But God says, we've not let anything distract us, but he's going to help us, and we've got to keep going until we reach um, the thing that God's got, God's the, the, the thing that, the plan that God's got for us. So you can go and really enjoy your holidays and then after seven weeks you're back at school. So you have to enjoy your holidays and then when you get back at school you've got to work really hard as well. So just like Jesus has got a job to do, God will help us to get that job done too. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you that Jesus shows us the right ways to do things. Help us to focus on what Jesus does. Help us to focus on what Jesus says. Help us to focus on you. Help us through your spirit to keep going until we finish the job that you've given us. And hear us as we come together to pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now, this is a really special day for you as well, because not only is school finishing, but what else is finishing? Stepping Stones is finishing as well. So you've got a wee holiday from Stepping Stones. You can still come and be with the big people in the church if you want. Um, we'll get you some colouring in things that can, when we've got that great big long boring bit in the middle, you can be, you can be colouring in. I try to make it exciting, but sometimes it's difficult. Um, so since this is your last Sunday, then I think we've got a wee something for you, have we? Ooh. I wonder if I've got a bag. No, oh, dear me. Maybe an empty one. I've got their names on them. So, Amy, this is for you. There you go. Yeah, this one's not got a name on it, has it? It's Othniel. You can see it from here, right? Right, Othniel, you're going to come and... There you are. I know where to look now. Oh, maybe I don't. Oh, Ruri. Maybe she didn't know how to spell that. <laughs> there you go. Struan. There we go. Struan's got to show it to his mum. Ailey. Look, it's got fairies on it and everything. Yeah. Kayla, here you go. There you are. Okay, and this one's from for Zoe. Can you take that, Kayla, and give that one to Zoe? All right. And this one's for Sophie for giving lots of help to the stepping stones. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh, bubbles. So, 
I would just like to say a thank you to all for coming to Stepping Stones, but I also want to say a big thank you to all your leaders, okay? Who else in the congregation is a leader? Stand up, Moira and Elma and Rona and Jackie. Who else helps with the Stepping Stones? There's a load, there's a loads of, of um, people are too, all right, Louise is up, up there as well. So there are lots of people who help with Stepping Stones and can we just give them a big clap too? <laughs> can I say a huge thank you to all of them on behalf of the chip? And so we're going to sing a song since you're taking another step on life's journey from school because you'll be moving on to a different class. Um, you've moved to holidays and then you're going back to a different, a different uh, class. Oh, you've got lovely bubbles. Can you blow them in the hall? Or outside? Oh, sorry. Outside. Outside then. Outside, okay. So we're going to sing one more step along the world I go from the old things to the new. Um, keep me traveling along with you. So if you meet me in the street during the holidays, will you come and speak to me? No! I hope you do, I'll come and speak to you anyway. Okay, I hear there is a party next door. I bet you wish you were we again. The party, okay? You can't believe you got them. Ooh. Does your mum and dad, and, does your granny know buy you bubbles? She's always got a great big long story. At, at least she's speaking to me. Let's pray. God of grace, we come to meet you today in our homes and in this building, seeking your wisdom, leaning on your strength, and giving thanks for your presence as we once again dedicate ourselves to you as we journey on through life and faith. God of all love, we come to you in need, wondering about pain in the world, crying out about violence in our world, horrified by countries at war and natural disasters, worrying about the present and the future. Be with us in our struggles, guide us in our choices, love us in our mistakes. God of all forgiveness, we come to you as we are, made up of all our choices, all our decisions, all our tests and trials, highs and lows, fears and doubts. So we bring to you, Lord, 
our mistakes, our regrets, all our guilt, and we place them into your hands. Lord, forgive us. In this season of hope, of rejoicing in the presence of you, our God, three in one, Father, Son, and Spirit, we give thanks for the knowledge that we are forgiven always and completely when we choose to follow you. And so it is with that knowledge and your presence that we have the confidence to pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I invite Sam Mary to read our scripture lesson for this morning. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, and reading verses 51 to 62. Let's listen for God speaking to us today. Samaritan opposition. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. As he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went on to another village. The cost of following Jesus. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back as fit for service in the kingdom of God. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his most holy word. Thank you, Sam. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have taught us that your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Help us to listen for your word and take it into our hearts so that we may come to know you more fully love you more truly, and follow more faithfully in the steps of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forevermore. Amen. The manager of a shop returned from lunch to find her assistant bandaging up his hand. Before she could ask him about the bandage, the salesman announced, Good news! I finally sold that ugly suit we've been having hanging on our sales rack for so long. Do you mean that awful pink and yellow striped leisure suit? That's it, the sales assistant beamed. Great job, the manager says. I don't know how you did it. That's the ugliest looking suit in the store. It's ever the the ugliest looking store, um, ugliest looking suit that the store has ever carried. By the way, what happened to your hand? Oh, the assistant said, after I sold the guy the suit, his guide dog bit me. (laughs) Sales people have been the butt of many jokes. Due to a small minority of people being lazy or unprofessional or even downright unethical. If we were to make a list of the worst sales tactics we've ever heard of, we'd list things like lying about the product or service, overselling its benefits, trying to coerce a a customer into buying something that they don't need, putting pressure on a customer, not listening to the customer, or getting angry 
when the customer says, no thanks. I'm sure we all have our own list of the worst sales tactics we've experienced. So it's interesting to see how Jesus responds to our Bible story to two different sales situations. Our lesson for today begins, as the time approached for him to be taken to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And this verse is really important. In the first situation, Jesus and his disciples plan to pass through a Samaritan village and they need places to stay and food to eat. So a few disciples go on ahead to make the arrangements. But when the Samaritans learned that Jesus was heading to Jerusalem for the Passover, they rejected him. Samaritans believed that religious sacrifices should be made on Mount Jezerim there in Samaria, in Samaria and not in Jerusalem. They refused hospitality to Jesus and his followers. Two of Jesus' disciples, brothers James and John, asked Jesus if they could call down fire from heaven to destroy the Samaritans. Talk about a bad selling technique. Let's put the fear of God into those Samaritans. They won't buy our product. Yet Jesus barely registered the insult. In fact, he rebuked the disciples and kept herding towards Jerusalem. In the second sales situation, an unmanned, an unnamed man approaches Jesus and says, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Now this is one of the strangest sales techniques. Jesus has got a willing recruit and he's turning him away. Hold your horses. You don't want to follow me. I don't have stables or a place to sleep. Then Jesus approaches another man and says, follow me. But this man says, Lord, let me go and first bury my father. And another man responds to Jesus' offering by saying, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. It looks like Jesus is missing a lot of opportunities to sell people to following him. He's not listing the benefits of following him. He's not appealing to their fear of missing out on a good deal or their desire to look good in the eyes of others. He's not being a very good salesman. There's something else going on here. And let's look back at verse 51. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus knows what's waiting for him in Jerusalem. Arrest, torture, and a lonely, painful, humiliating death. And yet our Bible verse says, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He didn't protest, procrastinate, or try to protect himself. He headed straight towards the cross, knowing that he was fulfilling God's purpose by giving his life for us. When Steve Jobs, the late founder of Apple Incorporate, was 17 years old, he read a quote that changed his life. It was worded like this. If you live each day as if it were your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. He says that after he read this quote, he began every morning by looking in the mirror and asking himself the question, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? Steve went on to say in 2005, remembering that I'd be dead soon and the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make are the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, 
all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. We could add to, to Steve Jobs' words that remembering that we are going to die is the best way possible to focus our mind on what is truly important. Is there a God? And if so, what does that mean for our life? The Greek word that Jesus uses in this passage for follow, as in follow me, is made up of two separate words. One word means to follow, to accompany, or to travel with. The other word refers to a path or a journey. Literally, the word follow means to path join to someone. That's what Jesus was inviting these people to do. That's what Jesus is inviting us to do. He wants those folk to know up front the challenges of joining his path. He wants them to count the cost. How do people know that we are followers of Jesus? Is it because we attend church, maybe even Bible study, or you pray before meals? Is that what it means to follow Jesus? Or does Jesus' path require a level of commitment, courage, and sacrifice that goes beyond just trying to be a better vision of him? I hope this Bible study, this Bible story today, will help us to understand that Jesus' path is not easy, but it's the pathway to life and joy and meaning and that God made, for, made us for this purpose. We're going to continue our service by singing All I Once Held Dear.
it's important for us to see, first of all, that Jesus walked in the path of commitment. He was passionately committed to obeying God in every moment of his life. Through prayer and obedience, he kept his heart, mind, and will constantly aligned with that of God the Father. And this alignment of his whole self with God allowed him to live purposefully without fear or anxious or distractions. What does undistracted, purposefully living look like? In 1901, Irish missionary named Amy Carmichael moved to Donavar in South India to minister to women and children there. Not long after, she met a seven-year-old girl who'd been held as a ritual prostitute in a Hindu temple. So Amy and her college opened an orphanage and then a school to reduce young girls out of prostitution eventually including boys too. So Donovar Fellowship grew to include an orphanage, schools, a dairy farm, fruit and vegetable farms, and numerous businesses to provide jobs for the lowest caste Indian citizens. In spite of great opposition to her work, Amy dedicated the rest of her life to ministering to the poorest women and children in Donovar. She died at the age of 83 and is buried in the Indian village she loved and dedicated her life to. She once said of her ministry, her ministry challenges, if one is to totally called to God, all the difficulties and discouragements only intensify that call. Jesus made it clear that his followers would experience difficulties and discouragement. What did he say to the first person who offered to follow him? Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus isn't offering earthly security or comfort. He could have protected his followers from these challenges, but he didn't. Why? In Philippians 3, the Apostle Paul says that we know Jesus when we share in his suffering. It's in the difficulties and the discouragement of following in Jesus' path that we understand Jesus' love for us in a deeper way. And by persevering through the difficulties and discouragement, we show the world how much we love Jesus. Jesus calls us to walk the path of commitment with him. Are we ready? Jesus also calls us to walk the path of courage. Leo Tu's an ancient Chinese philosopher, once said, being deeply loved by someone gives you strength. By loving someone deeply gives you courage. Loving someone deeply gives you courage. When you love someone deeply, you're willing to confront your fears and face down challenges unflinchingly for their sake. That was the source of Jesus's courage too. He knew he was deeply loved by God. That was the source of his strength. And Jesus loved God and us deeply too. That was the source of of his courage. There was no pain he would not bear to show his love for us. And now he calls his followers to show that same level of courage in loving others in his name. In 1947, Bob Pierce preached at Youth for Christ events in China. Thousands of Chinese citizens became followers of Jesus through his message. He preached at a small school for girls run by a Dutch missionary named Tena Kehuber. Many of the girls prayed to become Jesus' followers at this chapel service, and Bob Pierce 
challenge them to go home and tell their families about their new commitment to Jesus. The next day, Bob stopped at the school to speak to Tina. She was holding a sobbing girl in her arms. Tina told Bob that this little girl, who they called White Jade, had prayed to follow Jesus at the previous day's chapel service. And when she returned home and told her father, he had beaten her with a cane and thrown her out of the house. Bob Pierce was stunned. He said, you're going to take care of her, aren't you? Tina replied, I'm caring for as many children as I can. The question isn't, what am I going to do? The question is, what are you going to do? And she handed white jade to Bob Pierce. Bob handed to her all the cash out of his pockets and promised to send more to cover the costs of caring for this abandoned child. But Bob couldn't get over her courage and what her love for Jesus had cost her. Bob, Bob traveled and preached in the poorest parts of the world, collecting the support to begin a new mission organization, World Mission. Today, it provides food, education, health care, and disaster relief to millions of people around the world. Bob's experience with White Tree Jade and Tina helped inspire the founding of World Mission. Tina's challenges, Tina, remember Tina's challenge to Bob? The question isn't what I'm going to do. The question is, what are we going to do? Jesus calls us to walk the path of courage with him. Are we ready? And finally, if we're going to join our path with Jesus, then Jesus calls us to walk the path of sacrifice. Sacrifice is simply an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else, regarded as more important or worthy. Jesus considered our life more valuable than his. That's why he headed to Jerusalem. He was giving up his life as a sacrifice, an offering to God in our place. In his death, he took on the weight and the penalty of our sins, so that nothing would stand between us and a holy, holy, holy God. Author T.R. Glover once wrote that the secret to the spread of Christianity across the Western world was because the followers of Jesus outlived, outgave, outdied the devotees of the other religions and cults. They had a great example. Jesus did it first. His love for our, our motivated, his love for us motivated him to walk the path of commitment and courage and sacrifice for us. And he invites us to follow him, no matter the cost. I hope that we will make the choice today to join our path with Jesus, God in the flesh, who loved us enough to give his very life to show us the way to God. We're going to sit quietly for a moment and reflect on this. How will we join our path with Jesus, God in the flesh, who loved us enough to give his very life to show us the way to God? Turn to your partner or your neighbor.
Amen. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful example you have given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus' love for us motivated him to walk the path of commitment and courage and sacrifice, and he invites us to follow him, no matter the cost. We thank you that you can see in us what we can't see in ourselves. You know the commitments we make to you. You know the courage we have within us to show your love. You know the sacrifice we are prepared to take. You realize that we can't do this alone. So we ask that you would send down your Holy Spirit upon us today, that we might be more committed, more courageous, and willing to sacrifice ourselves for you. Prince of Peace, this week as violence continues, as inhumanity is commonplace, as war rages at home and all across the world, especially in Ukraine, as many hundreds of people have died and are injured in the earthquake in Afghanistan, we ask for your love to shine through, that those in authority might place peace and healing above power and selfishness. We pray for the G7 summit to make significant choices to help those most vulnerable. We pray for the unrest in America over abortion rights for women. Lord, we ask you that you would be with all of us, be beside us, and lead us always to your path, and give us the strength and wisdom and humility to those who incite hatred and start wars, to see that we always have a choice to change and ask for forgiveness. Holy Spirit, our sustenance and strength, breathe your fire of hope and joy into our church, here in this parish, this country and this world. Help all of your people to choose to continue on the path of faith through every test and every doubt. Almighty God, in this time of trial, we pray for all those known to us and unknown who are bereaved, lonely, isolated, excluded, or in any need for, of you in any way. Hear now the prayers in each of our hearts for those we know and those we don't, and place them into your hands. Lord, surround them and us in your loving arms and grant us your peace. God, in good times and bad, who stands with us in every trial and every test, be with us now and help us in every choice we make today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now dedicate our offering. constant presence in our lives. And so we bring this offering today 
and as we bring ourselves into it, that we will be used for your good and for your kingdom. Amen. Our final hymn today is, Will You Come and Follow Me If I But Call Your Name? From here to eternity, from pew to street corner, from young and old, your word is shared. May we never give up when the going gets tough. May we remain ever hopeful, ever loving, ever ready to serve you. Send us now in your name, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today, tomorrow, and forever. Mm.